Hello, I'm Max Wolf, aka Minimax here, and today we're going to look at some movie data from IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. Right here I have a Jupyter Notebook with all the code previously done to make things go by very quickly. This notebook is for my post, movie aggregator ratings have no relationship with box office success, which is kind of a spoiler, but well, we'll see. This Jupyter Notebook uses the R kernel, so all code in this notebook is for the R programming language. For example, in this first cell, I load a few packages that will make my life a lot easier, and also capture the session info, which, which shows which packages I use, so, such as ggplot2, R Culliber, dplyr, and reader, and all these packages will be very important for processing the data. Speaking of processing the data, here we have a cell describing what we're going to be doing, and this cell uses the markdown syntax. In this cell, I use reader, the reader package by Haley Wickham to load the data into R. The exact function I use is read dlin, and it read, reads any type of file given a specific delimiter, which is the tab delimiter as the movie data dump I have from OMDB. API is in a tab separated format, which is usually a TSV, but in this case it's a TXT. And this is an interesting case that's actually pretty unusual. When it, Normally you could use read TSV since it's, it's a TSV, but in that case it didn't work and it actually caused a few errors. And the workaround was to A, explicitly define the column types, such as integer, character, or a double as the respective data types and use the read the lim instead of the read TSV. And as a result, I got the all the data to load about 422 megabytes, which you definitely cannot do in Excel. And use dplyr syntax to look at the top six records of data to verify that everything makes sense. And you can see the columns of the data. We have the ID, which is IMDB's ID. We have the we have the title, we have the year, we have the rating, we have the runtime, everything might need to have interesting statistical analysis. We have the Metacritic ratings, which is numerical from 0 to 100. We have IMDB rating, which is very key from one, 0 to 10. And we also should count on how much data we have, in which case it's about 1.1 million movies. And that's actually pretty cool. Another data set we have is the Rotten Tomatoes data set, which is separate from the IMDb data set. We load that in a similar manner using the read delim instead of read TSV, and we introspect the Rotten Tomatoes data the same way. You can see that we have an ID here, and spoiler alert, this ID corresponds to the ID here, so we can make take advantage of that to combine the data sets. But also in the, in the IMDb data set, are, we have the meter, which is the Rotten Tomatoes rating from 0 to 100 percent. We have the user meter, which is the audience ranking. And we also have the box office, which indicates how much money the, the movie made domestically in, in theaters. Now in order to combine the data sets, I noted that these ID columns are the same, so we join this data frame with this ID on this ID from this data frame using a left join. Um, to left join the DF tomatoes onto the IMDB data set. And that since we did that, we can just get rid of the Rotten Tomatoes data set. We don't need that anymore. And then we can double check by looking at the new data set and it has all the columns we need in all in one place. That's very helpful. But in order to improve the analysis, we need to do a little more processing. If you look here, you can see that the runtime is a character. It's not numeric, so we can't do any quantitative analysis on that. And to do that, I do a few basic programming 101 techniques to kind of do it. Since there are a few empty ones, we check. I, I create a helper function to determine if, if the function is empty or not, we turn, return NA, but if it's not empty, that means the runtime exists and we can convert to numeric. Fortunately, they're all the runtimes are in this pattern. It's all X amount of minutes. It's not hours and minutes, 
which makes my life a lot easier. So we just split on the space and take the first value of it. And do running a test, we on four men, we do get four back, and that's helpful. Then we mutate uh, the runtime column to this new value. And then no errors occur, and that's good. But and we, and we double check to make sure it is numeric. It, it is indeed numeric, and it's a double, which is fine in the, for this case. But parse box office is a little bit harder. Since, as you see, there's a lot of sparse data, we need to filter on data that's not sparse and look at it to see the format. And here we have a mix of formats, which uh, runtime had a, had a single format, this does not, which will result in slightly uglier code, and I'm not proud of it, to be perfectly honest. But it's what we have to do. So I, so I create another helper function, parse box office, which works similar to the to the parse runtime, but it's, it's kind of ugly. First thing we do is check again if it's sparse, return NA, but it, now then we check the last character. If it's a K, we multiply the we multiply this numeric value by a thousand, or it, and if it's not a thousand, it must be M, which which is a million. Then multiply that by a million. Fortunately, there are no domestic data set domestic values with a billion box office, so we don't have to worry about that for now. Anyways, look, double check, everything looks hunky dory. Then modify original data, then all's good in the world. But since we spent so much time processing this data, we might as well save it for future use, which I don't run here since this all saves my Dropbox and I don't want to fill up all that space yet. Now we can have some fun with the fun part, plotting pretty charts. The first thing to do is aggregate this data frame all the way back up here, we have all this data, we have about 1.1 million rows, so we can all combine it all and calculate averages and other summary statistics on it. For this summary data frame DF box, we select the title, the Rotten Tomatoes meter, rep the column, and the box office column, which we've now processed. For we should filter this aggregate data frame on the values which actually exist. Fortunately, here we add NAs manually which also help identify sparse data we would keep we only want to keep the values which exist for both the rotten tomatoes values and the box office and for validation purposes we can arrange descending by the box office values and then checking the data frame we have a lot of movies we, rec we recognize the avatar generate has a rotten tomatoes meter rating of 83 percent and the box office gross of 760 million. And coincidentally, I have the Rotten Tomatoes page for Avatar up right here. And you can see we have a box office of 760 million, and of course, a tomato meter of 83%. So the data seems pretty robust, and that's good. Another thing to check is the data set size. It's about 4,800. And this will vary on various scatter plots due to the availability of the data. And another thing to check is the correlation between the Rotten Tomatoes rating. But we'll be, for the analysis in this post, we'll be taking the log base 10 of the box office growth since it can vary so wildly. But it turns out the correlation is actually negative, which is counterintuitive. Shouldn't the good movies generate good box office revenue, but it's, it's as far as correlation goes, it's a relatively weak negative correlation. It's not a strong negative. Moving on to the ggplot2 stuff, which is what I'm sure you're here to see. Here we build a simple ggplot2 with the dfbox dataset and the meter and box office aesthetics, but the first thing I want to add to this plot is an annotation of a rectangle between 60 and 100, which represents the Rotten Tomatoes fresh. And it adds a little bit of flair to the data set with, without much effort, so why not? We add points, we'll be alpha stacking. Um, and this stroke parameter is actually new to ggplot 2.0.0. .0 .0. 
and we want to set that to zero, otherwise that causes problem with alpha stacking. We'll use my 538 inspired theme. As I mentioned earlier, we want to scale this to log base 10. The breaks, I want to set manually with a uh, one do steps from 10 to the third, which is 1,000, and to 10,000, etc., to 1 billion. We can use the labeler to set to dollar. For, this, for the x-axis, which is the meter, I want to set it from 0 to 100 by 10, so 0, 10, 20, 30. With labels, I'll cheat and force the labels to use the percent equivalent of the 10, 11, 10, 20, 30. And I'll manually enforce limits so it gets no bright ideas about trying to truncate it at all. The labels are what you expect. I have x-axis, your y-axis, your title, always label your axes. And then for the GM Smooth, this adds a trend line, and it will add a linear trend line as opposed to a non-parametric trend line. This max save function saves it to a, a P PNG with a specified file name and a, a, a source citation. Put that all together, and we get this. The trend line is clearly negative, which is definitely warrants some more investigation. But you can see that there are actually clusters here, clusters of bad movies with only 10 to 30% Rotten Tomatoes score. And that cluster is very suspicious. Maybe we shouldn't be doing alpha stacking, but maybe doing clustering to see if that adds more info. So I create a second plot, which uses the stat, ten stat density 2D geom to create a contour map of the data sets, which illustrate contours using a KDE kernel density estimate, and that will provide a, perhaps a more helpful visualization. The code mostly is the same between these two. There's very little change aside from the stat, ten, stent, stat density 2D. Put it all together, and that's much more helpful. We can see that there are two separate areas one cluster with between 10 million and 100 million and another cluster between 100,000 and 10 million and the the opposite of what you expect the good the movies with high box office have between 10 and 30 and the movies which are rated highly barely make anything but it it is possible in fairness that these movies have lower budgets, but unfortunately that analysis is a bit trickier, so I can't say that with confidence. Doing the same thing for the Rotten Tomatoes audience, we have the user meter column, and essentially the code is going to be identical for the next three charts, and that is one of the benefits of using our dplyr ggplot2. You can reuse a lot of code and save a lot of time, and there's no shame in doing that. And the same heat thing here, there are 5,100 5, entries instead of 4,800, and the correlation is positive, but very weak. So I, you don't want to ex expect too much from this chart. But looking at, this, at the Rotten Tomatoes audience score, and you can see that this is pretty straight. It's not moving much, so you would think that implies so much, almost no correlation, maybe a slight correlation. Perhaps looking at the contour map might reveal more information. And you can see it's a lot more varied out. It's shifted a little. It's between 30 and 80. That's a pretty good good range. Uh, that's pretty realistic. You wouldn't expect 90 to get 90, 100. And that seems more realistic. And for the cheap movies, they are more, var more varied as well. They're centered maybe around here, but it does extend maybe down to 50%. That's good to know. IMDb rating is very unique. And this is kind of an, one of the more interesting d variables in this particular analysis. Run the same thing, but this correlation is n zero. It's very close to zero, which implies that there is absolutely no relationship between an, the IMDb rating and the box office gross. And that is actually pretty surprising. Go look at the scatter plot of IMDb user rating. See, this is a de very different shape of all things. 
I should, I should probably mention about this line gap. If you look, if you looked way back at the box office gross, it's not very precise. So that's just a data fidelity thing, but we can live with that. Especially with the contour plots fixing everything up. Continuing on. If, if this is what the shape looks like, the contour map must be extremely weird. So look at the contour map, and that's extremely constrained. IMDb, it's between 5 and 8. This is a 4-point scale. IMDb is rigged. It is not helpful. Don't trust IMDb user ratings for anything. <laughs> yeah. And lastly, look at the Metacritic. Same, same, same deal. Not as much data. And like with Rotten Tomatoes, it correlates pretty well with Rotten Tomatoes ratings. That's interesting. They're both weak negative. It's got, it's got a plus somewhat similar. It's the, this cluster is still bet more between 20 and 30 as opposed to Rotten Tomatoes, which was 10 and 30. This is uh, the, sec the secondary cluster is more downward, more focused, lower, I guess. Then look at the contour map, same thing. See, a little bit, little bit more, the tire contours have a little bit more breadth. So there's a lot more flexibility with Metacritic ratings. And that's kind of it. I hope this Jupyter Notebook was helpful. It will be included, open source, MIT, in the project repository after the blog post goes up. So... Hopefully, let me let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments of the article or find me on Facebook, Twitter, etc. And hopefully, this will provide more insight into if reviews are actually valid or not. And I'm kind of split. I'm Max Wolf, Minimax here, and good night.